green court based on marriage remember i'm still doing a series of adjustment of status video we started with uh, removal proceedings and what to do in removal proceedings uh, we talked about uh, pd request denials and we talked about pd requests being granted uh, how we went about it and now we want to talk about about green court uh, based on marriage and why it's important to just start with a qualified lawyer from the beginning well because some people for some reasons uh they get charged with fraudulent marriages why because probably they didn't get a proper guidance as simple as that just guidance they couldn't defend themselves well and you know when it raises doubt in the eyes of the USCIS officer, what they will do, they will make a house visit, okay? And once they make a house visit, it's gonna give them some hint to determine whether this marriage in question is a good faith marriage or it's just a marriage for the purpose of obtaining immigration paperwork. And once they determine that, well, you're gonna have to fight for it and if you do not fight for that charge then it stays in your system and it's going to be a permanent bar no waiver is available for that well i want to talk about the case and i want to talk about what is the strategy um uh, and this is the first case then i'll talk about the uh in the second video i'll talk about the second case this is a case where this person right get married to a US citizen. And the wife in question has now passed away, now deceased. However, when they were married, the wife in question had children. Uh, so the person, because he got married to this US citizen, uh, then he's a stepdad to the wife. What happened was they went to the first interview. Uh, there were some type of contradictions in their answers and, you know, raises doubt in the eyes of the officer and the officer decided to make a visit, house visit. The officer went to their house one year after the interview. So basically, uh, they waited a one year after the interview to just find out whether those people are still living together or not. So this is one thing you have to know. They don't have to come to, the, to your house um, just right after you file for the, the forms. They can come even one year after the interview because they haven't made a decision. They just have to double check. So they went and made a house visit and find out that those people moved out from this apartment. Then they went to the second house another year later or maybe six months later and find out that uh, the couple in question moved out as well from that apartment. So they came up with a conclusion that while well, this was a fraudulent marriage, but before they made the, the determination, they went again to another house visit, and this time around, they find the husband. By the time they went there, the, ha the wife has already passed away, and the husband was living with a girlfriend who's now a spouse because they already got a divorce. Uh, they got a divorce prior to her first wife uh, passing away. So now they find this person in this new uh, house. They ask a few questions, they look at in the, the house, they went to the bedroom, of course, with the permission of the uh, non-citizen. They look at stuff and they figure out that, no, this person was living with this girlfriend even prior to get, uh, basically, while he was married to the other first wife. So they come up with a decision that, a conclusion that this was fraudulent marriage. Well what are the rights now of this person they give you know 33 days has the you know they will write it on the decision letter you have 33 days to file the form i-290b or appeal with uh, the board of immigration appeals or something like a hundred lines and this person did not appeal and now they find themselves stuck with this situation um they try to consult now with other attorneys and finally came to me what am i supposed to do with this type of case well the first question we ask is that was this marriage fake because if the marriage was fake then we we stop there right so 
Then the person said, no, this marriage wasn't fake. This is exactly what happened. By the time they were coming, I was already out of that house. Uh, then they would ask people around the house and people knew us. They would say that uh, we're still receiving their mail, but they don't live here anymore. And because we moved out. So I asked uh, this person, if you have, uh, this is a potential client, of course, uh, if you have anything new, new evidence, not available when the decision was made or not available while you file for your case, we can restart this case on a good ground now with briefing USCIS that um, we're going to restart. Uh, this is what exactly happened. This is proof and this is new affidavits. Uh, not to rise of people with personal knowledge of this relationship, including the stepchildren and other friends. Um, basically trying to introduce new evidence and see how it's going to go. At least uh, he has new evidence. They're going to look at it um, new as new stuff and compare it to the previous evidence and make another determination. Because now he's, he's married to somebody who is actually a U.S. citizen and uh, has they have children together this is a good marriage but remember we forged a marriage even the after the facts even when you get into a good marriage after the facts it's really difficult to convince uscs because fortunate marriage bar from subsequent petitions in other words it's a permanent bar so that's why you have to fight it from the beginning when they start talking about alleged facts of fraud you gotta come up with an explanation a solid explanation fight those allegations so that you can get something uh considerate that's how you do it otherwise it's gonna stay in the system and you will not be able to adjust status no matter what even if you have a new marriage that is actually good so this is how it's uh, avoid you know, in, in short, what we're going to say in this case is just avoid those type of mistakes. Okay. Get a qualified attorney for guidance. Go to the interview with your attorney present so that you can avoid a lot of uh, misunderstanding and misconstrued facts and evidence. They are there to help you out. So, and they can withdraw some evidence if they find that those evidence lack credibility. So that's the job of their attorney. Um, and they can help you, really guide you. But if you engage in fraudulent marriage, there's nothing an attorney can do. Um, that's why we advise not to, because it's a permanent bar. And you might be persecuted too, uh, prosecuted, <laughs> sorry, not persecuted, but prosecuted uh, for those type of criminal acts, because it's fraud, you know? Um, yeah, this is it for this video, but I'm going to do a second video. We're going to talk about fraudulent marriage again, but in a different context, uh, we're going to talk about it. And this is another case for another client that we're working on. Uh, until next time. Bye-bye.